Hi everyone, welcome to episode 3 of the Feedback Revolution show. Today we have with us Patty Cosgrave, the CEO of Web Summit. Patty, thank you so much for being here today with us. Uh, it's a great pleasure. Thank you. Well, strange times we're living in. Our thoughts obviously go to everyone uh, on the front line of this fight, to the people who are most suffering from this. Uh, but also to entrepreneurs and founders, um, a subject very dear to us. And that's why I thought of focusing our conversation today around your global connection experience uh, and, and try to get some helpful advice for founders. And Paddy, you started Web Summit in 08, 09. Uh, do you see any similarities between what happened then and what's already happening now and it's still to come? Any advice for founders on how they can make the best of the opportunity and adapt to what's happening uh, out there? For entrepreneurs, it, it, it depends very much what you're doing. I mean, some startups are very fortunate and they're already thriving in this situation because it's very easy for them to work, all work from home. But, you know, I have friends running coffee shops and it's a bit of a disaster um, because nobody can come to the coffee shop and they don't really do, uh, they don't really do online ordering people are just making their coffee at home now and um so th that's the first thing you know there's just some startups that won't be able to adapt and you know we're very fortunate if you're in the category where you are fortunate and you can work from home i think there's many great advice kind of blogs and posts that have been written about working from home one of our own um team who, who you know tome uh, has worked remotely for 10 years. He now has a remote team that he's managing out of Porto. He's managed remote teams before. And, and he wrote a kind of a cheat sheet, very, very short. It's in no way, he doesn't pretend that it's comprehensive, but um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just a good starting point for entrepreneurs to learn about some of the things when you're trying to run a team remotely that, um, that are important. And so for all of us, you know, it's just, a, it's a steep, it's a steep learning curve and, uh, you know, lots of lots of mistakes are going to be made. Yeah, that's definitely true. We're already seeing companies having to digitalize much sooner than than what they expected. So definitely, humans are adapting uh, the best they can. And I believe founders have to be extra sensitive and agile, quick to learn and to adapt to the noise. I know that this is impacting uh, some more than others. But we have to be opportunistic and use this as an excuse to work even harder and look for new chances. For example, yeah. do you think that markets uh, like the Asian yeah. places that are fighting it quite well, uh, that have already been through their peak, would be a possible new target for some startups? Um, yeah, maybe. Um, I, I think there are some risks of secondary infections, as kind of second waves or third wave. Uh, those countries, because they developed the protocols that, you know, a lot of testing capacity, they know what to do, the protocols to follow, they should be able to tackle them quite quickly. Um, yeah, I, I certainly think so. I mean, we're doing a lot of stuff in Japan and Korea right now, two countries that are dealing very well with the crisis. Um, and, you know, that's, that's, probably, uh, that's probably a great opportunity. But I also think there's just lots of opportunities that maybe... Um, aren't foreseen. So, for example, last week uh, we connected a, a whole bunch of CEOs of tech unicorns um, together in small group chats of five and six. Um, and it was an opportunity for CEOs just to talk for an hour about the challenges, the opportunities, the uh, comms, internal communications problems they might have been having or things that they seem to, to, to be working. Um, and one of the things that kind of came out of all of these different sessions was that actually a lot of companies had just seen entirely new revenue lines. They are quickly realizing that in a world where everybody's at home, it turns out that there's a massive, this new market for demand for products and solutions. Um, it, it's not as if uh, life has stopped. In fact, every company and every employee is trying their hardest to keep the company in business uh, and to keep their job. So that creates this immense pent up appetite for new solutions to a whole set of new problems. Um, and, you know, if anything, I, you know, I think entrepreneurs, especially startups are always, you know, they're always uh, by their virtue, their size, they're much leaner, they're quicker to adapt. 
um, if they need to pivot everything or a small part of their business, they can do that. And I think people just have to, if possible, uh, remain open uh, to that potential. We've even seen that, you know, in our case, we never did hangouts before with um, with six founders. We used to, we do roundtables at all of our events, but nothing like this. And you know, people people really love it. It's not, it's not a business. We don't charge for it, but you know, maybe we could. I can see what you mean. Uh, we're seeing a lot of remote tools getting an increase in demand. There are industries that obviously are more affected than others. Uh, especially with social distancing uh, events are struggling a little bit mm. more, but still you have adapted to, to the circumstances. I know you will be having collision happening from home. Um, are you excited about it? Do you think online events are here to stay as an alternative to, to the physical ones? What you um, think? Yeah, like, I mean, I think it is. Uh, like, interestingly, over the course of the last few months, we found Web Summit attendees from New Zealand, for example, who would buy a ticket every year to Web Summit, a cheap ticket at the very start, and never, never go to Web Summit itself. But they'd basically participate through the app. They'd watch some of the talks, and then they'd use the app for their business to try and connect to lots of people that were there. Uh, and kind of say like, oh, I'm really busy. I can't actually meet you. I uh, won't be able to meet, but let's definitely follow up after website. And um, so the software has already enabled people to essentially do web summit from home. It wasn't built for that purpose, but people were essentially making it work for that purpose. I mean, um, streamed content um, is not a challenge. I mean, that's been solved. I mean, I mean, TV broadcasters were broadcasting live content 60, 70 years ago. Um, networking around an event, um, that's something that's a bit more um, complicated, I think. And, um, you know, very understandably, there's now dozens of conferences that are online, but the component that they're missing that I think people value most, at least from our survey data, is the ability to meaningfully network with people. Uh, being able to type into a live stream chat, you know, okay, that's interesting. Maybe being able to ask a, a speaker a question. Yeah, maybe that's interesting. We don't even have questions at Web Summit and people still, people, people are there maybe to get a little bit of inspiration, see a couple of speakers, maybe a couple of workshops. Most people spend most of the time um, meeting companies and networking with people. Sometimes it's structured and sometimes it's very spontaneous. You're just getting your lunch and you're sitting at a table and you, you know, everybody's got a, everybody's there for this pretty much the same reason. Um, and you just never know who you're going to meet. Um, and so replicating that, I think, um, is an opportunity. Obviously, this is going to drive the mass adoption of everything from telemedicine to remote schooling. Um, you know, it's fantastic. And it's, uh, you know, I think the world will emerge from it much, much better um, for it. Um, and as well, I think democracy might, like, this might be the, the kind of the catalyst that fundamentally rewires our democracies, enabling basically everything from electronic voting, because they're going to have to enable that, um, kind of distributed parliaments where politicians actually, you know, everywhere don't need to come to parliament. You know, they're elected in many cases to serve the interests of, let's say, Porto, but represent Porto in the National Assembly, but they spend two of their five days essentially kind of commuting up and down. Uh, and they, you know, potentially could reduce that to just being in Lisbon once a month um, for an important kind of national assembly. Um, I, I just, uh, and the, the ability for politicians to actually interact with the public, uh, basically online, could, I, you know, sometimes if there's no compelling reason to change something, change either doesn't happen or happens very slowly. Um, and I think this moment is, uh, is somewhat different. Yeah, I see. When I first joined, uh, I remember being told that Web Summit engineers serendipity. Um, there's this thing now called Web Summit Mafia because of all the people that left the company, either to start their own like I did or to go yeah. on and work for big companies. Uh, for me, Web Summit engineers serendipity, not mm -hmm. only uh, for attendees. Um, I like to say it does so in both externally and internally. Yeah, there's obviously another yeah. proposition for people that attend the event, but uh, for me, 
it was crucial to speed up my knowledge and capacity to do mm. what I am trying to do today. It's not only me. Uh, there are plenty of cases much more su successful that yeah. span out of the company and go about to start their companies. Why do you think this happens? What makes Web Summit such a, a special place to form entrepreneurs? Well, yeah, I mean, I'd love, I'd love to say that it's Web Summit that makes the people, but we basically have a bias for hiring entrepreneurial people. And a lot of the people that apply, especially to work in the startups team where, you know, you've, you've gone through are themselves, they're self-selecting because they're very interested in um, startups and investors. And then you spend, you know, months, years uh, talking to every startup in the world. So you kind of become like, you know, you become like Neo in the Matrix. You just like, uh, you begin to understand things that most entrepreneurs don't. When you meet most entrepreneurs, they've never listened to 10 other companies pitching. Well, maybe they have, but they certainly not listened to 50. You know, you've listened to a thousand companies pitching more. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. You know, and you've talked to them. You've also watched their evolution, where you've. Um, um, I'm sorry to talk at length. Lots of companies you've talked to them, and you at the start. This happened to me very early days. I'd be like, "Wow, this guy is so impressive, or this girl is so impressive." Um, but then the company would just go nowhere, and then I talk to these other people, and I'd be like, "This guy can." This girl can barely articulate what they're trying to do, but the idea would just go places. And um, I think you learn how to, I don't know, you just learn a special set of skills. And I think that's happened with lots of um, lots of the people that have gone on. I mean, there's 20 plus um, startups that have spun out of Web Summit, which is kind of a ridiculous plus. number for the size of the company. I remember when I first joined Web Summit uh, and had one of my first chats with you, it was at the end of Q2 summer party and you were telling me some stories uh, from the very beginning. And I specifically remember yeah. the one you told me about how you had heard a pitch uh, from this guy called Travis Kalanick at Uber. And at the time, it didn't sound like it would go places. So your advice for me was that we should not judge people too much on their ideas. Instead, we should allow them to execute and prove their case. That's something I've learned. It really changed my perception of things. And you're right. That's how sh we should do it. Oh, and, and I, you know, and I always think, um, you know, so often if the ideas were obvious, somebody would already be doing it. But constantly, by, by the very nature of this new thing, you come across these ideas and, you know, it seems ridiculous. But that's just because nobody's really executed or done it before. So. Patty, that was the bulk of the questions. To finish it off, I'd like to ask you uh, three rapid fire questions. Right, I'll fly through them. The best thing you've ever lived at Web Summit? Ever, ever learned at Web Summit? Lived, lived. Lived. The best thing I've ever lived? Yes. What do you mean by so, that? So, the best thing that ever happened to you during Web Summit? um during the web summit um yeah well you, you know for me it's 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 over time at the very start you know it was myself and dave initially just doing everything then it was myself alex dara doing everything um and and then you get to a point where you just don't have to do anything and even whatever problem emerges the people that uh, work with you through experience and through skill will always have a better solution than you do, uh, and that's 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 the most special moment for me. It's just watching watching the the, the team just do incredible things, and, uh, and sometimes it's hard as an entrepreneur to step back and stop being such a control freak. <laughs> but it happens to everybody. So that's the that's that's the best thing. Yeah. The best advice you've ever got. Don't take advice from people offering it. Seek advice from people who aren't. In the worst moment? Um, I definitely think when the Wi-Fi went down two years in a row in Web Summit in 2014 and 2015, and we had no control over it, though apparently we, we did have control over it. But that was definitely the most uh, frustrating thing that ever happened. That's great. Patty, thank you so much for being here today with us once again. Yeah. It was a great conversation, I believe. Um, thank you so much. Stay safe, stay sane, 
All right. Best take of luck. care.